Welcome, my dear labels, to my review of the My Hero Academia movie. Two Heroes is right here. I bought the movie. I was so excited. I waited for it for so long. I couldn't watch it in the cinema or theaters around the time it came out, which was sad, but I got to watch the movie and now I can watch the movie as many times as I want. But knowing me, I'm probably not gonna rewatch it again because I don't really rewatch movies ever. <laughs> A long time ago, yes, but nowadays, no. Now the My Hero Academia movie, Two Heroes, it was a good movie. So basically the premise is the students went to I Island, which is a man-made island where a lot of scientists get together, work on experiments. And it has the same security system like Tartarus, where all for one is held and stuff. So it's really hard for anybody to break in and steal stuff, unless you're on the island already and you're like a scientist or something. So the defense mechanisms, the robots and stuff, is just so much security that no matter what kind of villain you are, like it's really hard to break into this island unless, like I said, you're already on the island or somebody, you got the connection or whatever, somebody lets you in that controls the security systems. Now, the movie itself, it was really awesome, especially towards the end. Yes, there will be spoilers in this review. Towards the end when Midori and All Might did plus Ultra Detroit Smash as well, I was like, that is so cool. And then David Shields like, okay, I don't gotta worry about All Might, you know, losing his quirk and all this stuff because, you know, there's people like Midoriya out there that they're gonna become the next symbol of peace. And yes, I do believe Midoriya is going to become the symbol of peace and Todoroki and Bakugo, you know, they're gonna be the number two and number three heroes right behind Midoriya. Because My Hero Academia is the story of how Midoriya becomes the number one hero. That's his journey on how he became the number one hero. So there's no doubt right there. Now, David Shield is basically um, what that guy, I, I forgot his name, was to Static Shock. Static Shock's partner that created all the gadgets and stuff. That was David Shield to All Might. He helped All Might a lot during his progress of becoming a hero and he met all might when he was a student at university and stuff and there were and all might was aiming to become a hero and david shield was aiming to become a scientist and he created all of all might's costumes and stuff so that was really cool to see the relationship how it how it was in the beginning and how all might and upstar from japan that went to the u.s you know became the number one hero and that's another thing i want to talk about all might was actually the number one hero in the entire world because when it was revealed in the manga that all might was the number one hero and when people talked about it i didn't know if it was only in japan or the entire world now this brings the questions there's other hero rankings um in japan where endeavor is the number two hero is endeavor the number two hero in the entire world or just japan and i know if you keep reading the manga more you learn that the rankings change once again but enough about the rankings another interesting thing i like about the movie besides the animation being really nice and fluid was that because of all my crime in japan was at six percent which is a great you know low crime rate while everywhere else else in the world it might have been a little higher or even at 20 percent or worse which is crazy so this means that japan as of right now the crime rate may have gone up obviously because all might is not the symbol of peace anymore and even if it went up 10 percent everywhere in the world crime rate is 20 percent or worse so hopefully midoriya alongside his friends they become strong enough heroes where they not only protect Japan, but try to have their influence in other parts of the world to make the world a better place overall and become the symbol of peace for the entire world. Well, Midoriya become the symbol of peace for the entire world instead of, you know, just certain regions in Japan and stuff like that. So that was really interesting to see as well. Now we got Melissa Shield and the Midoriya, you know, relationship thing, not really a relationship, you know, but a lot of people probably ship that. Uh, that was really interesting. And I like her, Melissa Shield, a lot because she said she's a support hero. And I like that concept of support heroes, you know, where, you know, you might not have a quirk or you might have a quirk that is not suitable to become a hero, but you could still help out your friend in combat and stuff. You still could create costumes for them. Gauntlets, like that gauntlet she made. Not especially, she didn't make the gauntlet especially for Midoriya, but for All Might himself. 
But I mean, she gave it to Midoriya as a present, and Midoriya was able to utilize 100% of his power on that hand, not both hands, on that hand with the gauntlet. Um, and he broke it towards the end and stuff. Because I was before I watched this movie, I was going to say, okay, this gauntlet, where is it in the manga? But it's not in the manga because it's broken and stuff. So I believe this story, this movie, I said story, this movie is canon, um, by confirmed by Horikoshi. So I'm going to take that word for it. And I just got to say, it was a really good movie. I uh, like the action, the fighting and stuff. Now, I do have my complaints with the movie. For example, the villain, the main villain of the movie was forgettable. We didn't even get his name. He had like some mag... Okay, the main villain's quirk was like some magnet. At first, I thought it was like magnetism. I'm like, oh, wow, we got Magneto in My Hero Academia. I thought it was magnetism that he did something with the ground. So I don't know what quirk he had. I don't know what it was. I, I literally thought it was magnetism. This man was performing alchemy and stuff. Like he was from Full Metal Alchemist. I'm like, okay, okay. And then we later on, later on learned that All For One actually gave him an extra quirk, but that was an um, enhancing quirk where basically he became stronger. That was not what he was doing prior where this man still like this and the, the ground went up. It reminded me of Shisaki or Overhaul from my Eric Damien the manga. I'm like, okay, this man is on his alchemy stuff. Like this man is in the wrong anime. Um, the villain was forgettable. We didn't get a name. His quirk was all right. It was not like the greatest quirk. Then he put on Cerebro. Let me stop playing. Too many X-Men references. He put on the, the machine that David Shield created and enhanced his quirk. This guy was on like some God tier thing. Um, uh, just his quirk got amplified way too much. And it's a good thing this got broken. And it's a good thing like governments and stuff, investors um, prevented the, the creation, the um not just ended the project because if that was in the market even for heroes that will be abused or stolen tech that villains could enhance their strength even more and it will become a big big thing and could cause wars and stuff so in my opinion when david shield was mad that his invention got taken away I did not side with him because that just doesn't make any sense. You created something that could potentially um, destroy the world or make it go into chaos and stuff. And as shown with this villain saying, oh man, I'm going to use this to kill all might, the symbol of peace, and then I could sell it for any price I want. Imagine All For One had that thing on his head. All For One is already overpowered. If the, he had that thing, he probably would have been as strong as he was in his prime or even stronger. And there's no way that All Might could have beaten All For One. In my opinion, the All For One wouldn't use tactics like that, like extra technology to try to get the upper hand. But then you got to realize this man has like maybe five to ten quirks in his body just to get an upper hand uh, against anybody that faces him. So um, I don't really know. So that was one of the flaws of the movie. Um, another thing I liked about the movie, however, is that little trial test where Todoroki completed it in 14 seconds, Midoriya in 16 seconds, and Bakugo in 15 seconds, which goes to show not how strong each character is, but how fast they could um, adapt to a you know a villain situation because the ro robots were supposed to signify villains and stuff. Um, the other characters that were there, like Kirishima, when she got stuck with his Harding quirk on the wall, I'm just like... You cannot be this dumb not to deactivate your quirk. Um, the team up with Todoroki and Bakugo versus those two villains was really nice to see. One had a quirk that made him to a purple monster looking thing. He was the Hulk from back in the day. Um, and then the other guy's quirk, he changed matter, like the space of matter, something like that. He didn't delete matter. He just changed like how matter was positioned. He got defeated when, when Bakugo threw some sweat on him. And then Todoroki uses fire to ignite the Glyso, uh, Ris Glyso I, I don't know the name of it. I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, this is not a science class. And yeah, but overall, the movie was really good. It was nice to see All Might's backstory. Not his full backstory because we didn't get Nanashimura, but a lot of his backstory of how he went to the States and stuff. And it was. I like that because I want more world building my Eric Damien. I don't want the characters just to be in Japan. I Island, we do not know where it is located. We don't know if that's in the States or somewhere. Because it's in the middle. It's always moving. And it's in the middle of the ocean. We don't know its direct location. But in the flashback, we did get to see some of the West. 
um, and stuff in the United States, a country. And it was, it was just nice to see All Might in his prime, young All Might. And to see that David Shield cares so much about his friend that he was willing to do anything to get his device back to actually um, amplify All Might's quirk again. Now, I just have a question. If David Shield actually managed to get the device and give it to All Might, would All Might's quirk, I don't think his quirk will come back. His uh, Or maybe he'll be able to use his quirk for longer because it's a quirk that's transferable. It's not a quirk that is his. It was given to him. So that's another thing. Another thing I want to talk about is the Melissa Shield conversation with Midoriya and how Midoriya was talking about how she was born quirkless, how that must have felt so bad. But then she was like, yeah, but I want to be a scientist like my dad. I'm still going to be a hero in a way because scientists at the end of the day, they create the gadgets, they create the costumes, they create all these tech that helps the heroes defeat the villains and in their own right they are heroes they're support heroes so i definitely want to see more of support heroes and there is a support not hero but you know student in ua i forgot her name the girl with the pink hair i think it's hatsume um so hatsume if i'm not mistaken with the pink hair and definitely see what support items she can create for me the ria and her friends so yeah those are the main things i really wanted to talk about and and also David Shield basically doing all of this, um, training. Not he, he wasn't a villain, but obviously he's gonna get reprimanded, um, or get in trouble for what what he did and stuff. Because there was police officers guarding his hotel room. Because obviously he's probably gonna go to jail after doing this big scandal, which is really sad. But you know, actions have consequences, and his actions, no matter if they were for good or for good reasons, it still has consequences because. He put the lives of many people in danger at the end of the day, even though he took a bullet for his friend that betrayed him in the end as well. So yeah, great movie. It was a really good movie. Oh, wow, I have this backwards. Out of my rating scale out of 10, like I normally do, it was not the best movie. It was a really uh, good scene. Forgettable villain, like I said, like I didn't really care about that. I'm gonna give this movie a 7.5 out of 10 for the first My Hero Academia movie. I know the second My Hero Academia movie got announced. I don't know when it's coming out, but I'll be sure to pick that up as well. And for the second movie, hopefully, um, please make the villain a little more rememberable. May give the villain a name and make them more interesting or something. Like, make them connect with the viewer because this villain, I didn't really care about at all. Like, that's a horrible villain. So, yeah, that's it for this video, and I hope you enjoyed the review, and peace.